guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I want to share with you what it was like in the run up to going into labour, the days and hours beforehand, how I felt, what we did and just kind of share the story with you. So I'm going to start off with our midwife. Throughout my pregnancy I had all of my checkups at the local health centre. We were allocated a midwife or we were told she was a midwife. I actually think that she's a nurse there, which was slightly misleading. And at the time it kind of felt okay, but in hindsight, and hindsight is a beautiful thing, I know that I just didn't get the support that I wanted and needed, the answers to my questions that I really, really needed to get. And I just feel like I should have trusted my gut much sooner and changed midwives. So we actually did change, but very late on in the pregnancy, we changed from the local healthcare to a private healthcare centre, a birthing centre here in Iceland called Björkin. I found out about Björkin on Facebook actually. There was a post where they were advertising that they were doing a prenatal class to learn about labour in Iceland, but taught in English. So we went along, we met a few people, we knew a couple that were there as well. And it was really interesting just to go over the basics that you had already researched upon, but it's quite reassuring to hear them from the people of the country that you're going to be giving birth in. I wanted to make sure that there weren't any massive differences from what I would be used to back in the UK and the NHS and what I've heard from family and friends. And it was just reassuring to me to find out where to go in the hospital, what floor it was on, where to park, all of those kind of things. So if you are also in Iceland, especially in Reykjavik, then definitely check out Björkin. So we changed over to a Björkin midwife. Her name was Harpa and she is absolutely wonderful. She did our last check at Björkin and we had a few discussions there because I had some issues from what the nurse had written in my file. She had noted down with a question mark that I might have gestational diabetes. And this seemed really odd to me that she wasn't sure, but she had put this in my file so it was there for everyone to see. So it kind of hovered over me whenever I had a scan or when we changed midwives as well, because I wasn't ever sent for the test and I wasn't asked at the hospital to take the test either. When I went for my later scans, they talked about inducing me. And that made me really nervous because I didn't think that I had gestational diabetes. I didn't think that I had any problems. And so I wanted to make sure that we could make this as natural as possible. And I really didn't want to be induced. I was 39 and a half weeks when I went for my meeting at Björkin. We sat down on a really comfy sofa in this nice calm environment where we had a cup of tea together and we chatted about ways to bring on labour, which I'd already researched and was very familiar with. There are things like doing exercise, being intimate with your partner, right the way through to drinking raspberry leaf tea, taking castor oil, there's un another type of oil. I did have these things, but I didn't try them because I didn't really want to bring on labor right then and there. If baby wasn't ready to come, then I was quite happy to wait till another week or so. But she did talk about acupuncture and acupressure. And I had never tried either of these before. So she said to me, I've got some time right now. I can give you a little short session, see how you feel. And then we can talk about doing another one in a couple of days time. I went through into the room, their birthing room, which was lovely. It was like a little sitting room, a kind of bedroom that had a large bed on it that would recline and sit up. So it was kind of, you could move into different positions. And they also had their birthing pool there. So you could imagine what it'd be like to actually give birth in their center. I lay down on the bed, we put some music on and it was really, really relaxing. It was lovely to just have a lie down, put your feet up. And then she brought out the needles and started putting them onto the acupuncture points to help, I guess, just bring on labor. There was some in my forehead, there was one in my ankle or lower down in my leg because I remember that being a little bit more kind of sensitive and I think there was one in my hand as well. This was the first time I'd ever had acupuncture before so it was really interesting to me and I just tried to relax into it and just lay down, listen to the music, close my eyes and just enjoyed 20 minutes of peace. It was lovely. 
We talked about Braxton Hicks contractions because I said to her that I think I'm having some false labour contractions, Braxton Hicks, and I'd been having them for a couple of days on and off. If you are pregnant right now and you don't know what Braxton Hicks are, definitely look into this yourself, but they're basically false labour contractions. They are helping your body or your body is preparing to go into labour. And so they are a good thing. They're not painful, they're just uncomfortable, but they will probably drive you mad if you have them on and off for a few days because you're constantly hoping that they're going to actually turn into full labour. But it is worth using that time to start preparing yourself for real contractions and to get yourself mentally ready for going into labour as much as you can. She said, this is a good sign, Braxton Hicks contractions definitely show that your body is getting ready to go into labour and it was also a point where Ingmar could start playing a bit of a role and massaging the lower half of my back just to help me through them and ease off the discomfort a little bit. It was really nice to meet her and just talk things through and kind of do it in a much more calm and loving way than in a nurse's office where she's kind of questioning things and making me worry, making me very anxious about things like diabetes and not actually concluding that with an end result and a test. I was very glad that we'd made that move over to a different midwife. So if you are in a position where you don't necessarily agree with or feel supported by your midwife or nurse, then I would definitely recommend that you make the move over to a different midwife because it's worth it. I was really worried about seeing this nurse again, which I have done since, and offending her by moving to a different person instead of thinking about myself and thinking about how I felt in this pregnancy. I just felt guilty that maybe I did have gestational diabetes instead of going and actually pushing for a test to give myself reassurance. Try not to think about others, think about yourself in this first because you're the one that goes through this. You're the one that's carrying your child, you're the one that's going to be delivering your child and you're the one that's gonna be caring for it as well. Timing of labor, such is life that you cannot plan when you're going to go into a natural labor. If you're having a planned C-section, then yeah, you know when it's gonna happen. We had been ready, we had done all of our nesting, we had the nursery ready, we had the cot set up, we didn't have any sheets on the cot yet. Um, but we pretty much were ready and then a few days before I went into labour, Ingmar and I had a second nesting period and we decided that we would buy all these new appliances. We bought a new microwave, we bought a new slow cooker, we bought a dishwasher because we didn't have one so we had that. We didn't install it yet though. <laughs> it was sitting in the living room and so when we brought Mia home and I sat breastfeeding my beautiful baby, I was sat opposite a dishwasher that was still in its packaging. We had bought a new fridge freezer and when it was delivered, it was delivered into the hallway and then we had to move it into the kitchen, which bearing in mind I was 39 weeks pregnant when we got this huge fridge freezer delivered to us, I actually did kind of help Ingmar move it into place. And I remember having the bounce ball in the sitting room, like the yoga ball. I just kept saying to him, oh, my back hurts a little bit, let me just rest, and I would bounce on the ball. And now, thinking about it, those were real contractions, possibly. They probably were, because I went into labour the next day. <laughs> I had also been to the charity shop down the road and had bought a bedside table drawers unit for the nursery and that was just sitting in the middle of the nursery because I'd washed the entire thing and put new handles on it and I was going to paint it to match the room but that got done maybe a year after Mia was born so it was just randomly sitting out as well. And to add to the list of things that I thought I could achieve before having baby Mia, I had just signed on with Issei skier to do a huge collaboration <laughs> photography project with them. I had a car full of skier that Ingmar brought up and put into the new fridge, which now basically just had shelves of skier in it. So yeah, you can't plan these things and we definitely weren't as organized as we thought we would be going into this. The night before, we had taken the midwife's advice and we had downloaded a really cheesy rom-com that she had suggested, which is called Knocked Up. She said that the labour that is shown in it is a little bit more realistic than most 
labors and deliveries in movies. So we did watch that. Ingemar fell asleep five minutes into it. I managed to finish it and then fall asleep. And then, as you know, I woke up at four in the morning and headed off to the toilet and my waters broke. And so if you want to find out what my labor story was like, head over to that video. I filmed that previously. And in the next video, I'm gonna talk about what it was like post labor. Hopefully you have enjoyed this video. It's given you some kind of reassurance how crazy things are in the lead up to going into labor and that you don't have to have everything perfect and you can have a dishwasher sitting in your sitting room for the midwife to come and see <laughs> as she's coming to check over your beautiful brand new newborn baby and help you with your breastfeeding journey. Hopefully you've liked this video. Please do subscribe if you haven't already. Check that notification bell and give this video a thumbs up. Leave me a comment if you have one as well and I'll see you in another video soon. Bye guys! Beep.